What up? What up? Top of the top. What's popping? What's cracking? What's good? What's up, y'all? We back. What up, John Shad? What up? What's good, bro? Hopefully, everybody rested up. Everybody had a good weekend. Good morning, Miss Jackie. How you doing this morning? Hopefully, everybody had a good weekend. We back. What's up, Jamila? Y'all know how Mondays be. Monday day, we back again. Trying to get trying to get back into this week flow. What's up, Shayla? What's up, Tamara Smith? What's up? I'm happy to see everybody here this morning. A lot of people today will be with the replay game. I know people ain't think I was coming on early today, but I'm trying to get back on my on my early schedule. What's up? Stop blaming the whites. <laughs> what's up? Dramatic. Y'all know what's up, man. Anyway, man, y'all know I'm going to holler later. What's up, Melanie? All right. We got a few things we're going to talk about. Nothing major, but we're going to take a look at what's going on because, you know, we we, we watching – this reset and we watching this downfall so we got updates today i'm be talking about Nicki minaj being blackballed and is it over for her but a lot of people already got their opinion but we're going to take a look at some things because some more stuff keep coming out giving us some facts we're going to talk about that and how she made bad decisions due to her arrogance and ignorance and she put herself in a hole we'll talk about that also, we're going we gonna to take a look at the John Morant Strip Club-ish event. Y'all know over the weekend they leaked them pictures on John Morant and that strip club. We're going we gonna to take a look at that and a couple other things. But just letting the people pull up. We here, though, you know. Shout out to the replay gang, like I said. Give me one second. All right. So anyway, we just gonna get into it. What up, Jay the Great? Funnel Fame Live episode three ninety two. You already know how we do. Um, if you're new to the channel, hit the all notification bell. Leave a comment if you feel like it, and share on all platforms. Let's go. The fall of Nicki Minaj. Bad decisions, ignorance, arrogance, and a whole bunch of other stuff. Now, this, this show right here is not to just bash Nicki Minaj. It's to take a look at the stuff she did to put herself in the situation. And we're going to take a look at some things. Basically, will come around, go around. So, in my opinion, some of the things that she did to other people now was happening to her. And y'all know when she had that smoke with Remy, Remy told you some of the stuff she'd be doing behind the scenes. But anyway, we're going to get, let's go. All right, we're going to take a look at this right here. Nicki Minaj believes other female rappers label pay for diss tweets aimed at her. So now with this article right here, she is basically saying that other female rappers record labels pay people to diss her in tweets. But y'all know I, I uh I always tell people, in my opinion, when I told you that most of these most of these artists, they got a whole team of people that a dish tweet you. It's called marketing teams. They got marketing teams and promoting teams. You know, I always tell you that they got people that sit in all look at it like a room on people sit behind cubicles, 100 people, and their job is to be online all day. This department job might be to like all day. This department job might be to make comments. This job is to retweet. That's how. Didn't how many times celebrities told you they don't really run their Instagram and Twitter like that because they got companies that do some of this stuff. And I told you before, my opinion that that whole beehive is the same thing. Beehive, body gang, Barbies, all of those are marketing companies disguised as regular people, even though some regular people is mixed into it. So, yes, but. She sat here and said that she believed other female rappers basically are going so low, they're doing so bad, they got to pay people to diss her. But really, maybe she just don't want to accept the facts 
that a lot of people are dissing her for some of the choices she made and how she is out here moving around. Maybe that's what it is. Maybe it's your arrogance that caught up with you. Maybe it's the ignorance because at the end of the day, Nicki Minaj has a lot of influence over young people. I already said this before. Most of the people that grew up off of her are grown now. A lot of them don't follow her like that no more. But we 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 understand that she had a heavy influence on the whole America. But key thing, Nicki Minaj believes other female rapper labels are paying for diss tweets. Might as well say she feel like it's a conspiracy of people paying to diss her. Maybe she might be delusional. Who knows? But we're gonna take a look at some. This is brought to my attention the other day when she was at the Rolling Loud tour, the, the Rolling Loud festival. What they say or what I saw the video. They was performing. When it was her turn to perform, the mic was acting up. The mic was cutting up. It was, it was, it was going, it was perfect. The whole sh it was perfect. Long story short, when she got to doing parts of her songs, the equipment started messing up. And then people saw the video. Y'all saw when Lil Wayne was laughing, smoking his blunt, paying her no mind. And you can see that's when she got tight right here. Y'all see it was packed, it was lit. All of a sudden, her mic start messing up. But for anybody that know about entertainment, if you know about the rap game, especially those sound people play games when they don't like you or something going on or somebody told them to do that to you. Remember a couple months back when Mace tried to perform in Cali and they messed his whole show up and he blamed it on Diddy because the whole show was rocking. By the time Mace went on the stage to do his songs, the whole sound system had messed up. That's a tactic they were using since back in the day, years ago, where if people don't like you or they don't want your music to hit, when you're on that stage, they will mess with that sound. So that's nothing new. That happens a lot. So like I said, she was on stage pissed off. And she probably knew what was going on because, like I said, it was working perfect. Now, mind you, like you said, Lil Wayne, he was just uh, he was just doing him the whole time. Like, he ain't care. <laughs> I think it was an inside joke because we also do have to remember that what? Lil Wayne is the one that put Nicki Minaj where she at. We could say all the stuff in the world. She, she would have still been rapping her ass off in New York. She didn't go to the next level till she went to Atlanta. And that was on the strength of Deb Atney. Deb Waka Flocka, mother from Queens, was her manager and made sure she met the right people at the right time. So you'll notice you seen during her path, she uh shitted on a lot of people that helped her in the beginning. Don't forget that because that's the reason why she's going through a lot of this stuff. Once the money coming started coming in at a high level, she started going to another level. She started shitting on people that helped establish her, like Fendi and people like that. I'm only saying this because to show her arrogance and ignorance. Ignorance just means unaware. Unaware to a lot of choices she made that's coming back to bite her. So everything was good on stage. Time for her to perform. Mike start fucking up. Lil Wayne hitting the blunt. He started laughing. Like he basically laughing and clowning. And don't forget, she shitted on Drake, too, a couple of times. So don't think a lot of them ain't getting payback. Anyway, now we're going to take a look at something else. This is really important with fitness today because this came out. A lot of people don't know what's going on. So this is really what brought my attention to this stuff. Nicki Minaj's husband too sick to attend mediation with rape accuser. Long story short. Her husband, he got to go to court. And he been trying to finesse the court dates. Basically, he trying to make it where he don't got to go to court. Because it is time for him in the state of New York to face his accuser. Me, even though he was already... It's really about... When the news came out that they were still continuing to harass the, the uh, woman that has him on a sex offender list. It was said he was harassing her, but it's not a fact. But his ass supposed to be in court, and his ass been trying to shake that court date, and he trying to get it postponed. K 
Kenny Kenneth Petty and the rapper's attorney Stephen D. Issa is asking Judge James Archo to reschedule the mediation for March 24th. Nicki Minaj married former flame Kenneth Petty in 2019, but he came with a seedy past. He served several years in prison for both manslaughter and first degree attempted rape. His rape accuser, Jennifer Hugh, sued the couple in 2021, claiming they consistently harassed her. But according to docs obtained by All Hip Hop, Petty won't be sitting down for, medi for mediation anytime soon. As the paperwork explains, the court ordered all parties to mediation on March 6th, but Petty fell ill. The meeting was rescheduled for March 9th, but canceled again. Now, long story short, you see, he tried to claim he was sick. He was supposed to go to court last week on the 6th. He claimed he was ill, meaning, you know, he's saying he was sick, so he didn't want to come to court. Maybe he might be ill because he's scared. Who knows? But he didn't come to court because he was ill. So he was supposed to go back on March 9th, which was Friday, if I'm not mistaken, Thursday. Either way, it was Biggie Small Death Day, March 9th. He was supposed to go to court. But he got it rescheduled to the 24th. So this is buying him time. But my point is, all of this stuff going on, while she doing all this rapping, meanwhile, her, her husband is still bringing attention from something he did in the past. And he still, see, what really brought all the smoke up is when she married him and put it outright. This is my point. She could have married him and kept him behind the scenes. But when she married him and started basically waving him in people's face, I think that's what made that uh, woman, Jennifer, really get pissed off. I think, you know what I'm saying? That made her get upset. And that's why uh, they kept it, she, she, she kept it going back in court. So we're going to take a look at this bad decision that Nicki Minaj made. Because really, if you, really, in my opinion, this was the bad decision she made, right? This is when her career started spiraling out of control. Because it is said that he is her handler and her manager. But I'm not even going to go there. I'm just going to show you how it's the dirt on his resume, his background, that really rubbed, rubbed off on her and got her looking bad and actually ruined her career. What's up, y'all? see y'all pulling up. So look, he is trying to get his court date pushed to the 24th. Either way, he has to face his accuser soon. But anyway, he also tried to get off the sex registry list. He tried to get off the list in New York, and New York is also where this court case is taking place at. But as you see, he's fighting to get off the sex offender registry. Why? Because as long as he's a registered sex offender, it's always going to hurt her career. That is my point. My point is... This is the worst decision she made. It was a bad decision. But there's certain reasons why she made the decision. And I'm going to get into it in my opinion. Because don't forget, allegedly, Kenneth Petty is supposed to be a blood. And then you got to understand her number one rivalry at the time was Cardi B, who was allegedly a blood. So in my opinion, we already know Nikki had already went pop. She was already out the way. And it was time for other artists to come up. But she wanted to remain relevant in the streets. So what best marketing tool, what best thing to do is link up with her blood? Especially when you got beef with Cardi B and she blooded out. So in my opinion, when she got with him, it was also a chess move and probably a protection move. Then we got to remember, before she got with him, she was already falling out with the industry. Because... They had already started washing their hands because she was already shitting on people. And you know a lot of people in the industry wanted to get with her. So in the industry, they're looking at it like, well, we're supposed to be family, but you go mess with an outsider. And then you mess with an outsider that has charges of being a sex offender. Therefore, most rappers, or most people know they're not affiliate their brand with nothing of that behavior. And that is the same thing that is stopping a lot of her her new endeavors, I say. You see how Rihanna did the Super Bowl? Nikki can't do stuff like that because of him. Because he's always going to be part of the problem. See that? So basically, she not blackballed. She blackballed herself. 
she put herself in a bad spot and it's is 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 coming back to bite her because this man is still trying to fight to get that off his name. That's how I know this shit is fucking up money. Kenneth Petty, who was convicted of attempted rape in 1995 for a sex attack on a 16-year-old girl a year earlier, tried to argue in a Brooklyn federal court lawsuit that he never got the chance to contest his status as a medium risk sex offender. Petty is 47 years old. His lawyer, Alan Gerson, contended that he was never notified about a 2004 hearing to challenge that status and that someone forced his signature on a document about the, the proceeding. Plus, he claimed he couldn't have possibly been told, he couldn't been told about it because he was in state prison. Basically saying the only reason why this stuff is on his record is because somebody signed for him. He was in jail in 2004. So he's saying he didn't sign that paperwork and he did not basically admit to that stuff. And he basically still trying to say he ain't a sex offender. But there was one big problem. Though a court transcript showed that Petty was not only present at the hearing, he said he didn't know about, but that he also didn't object to being listed as a level two sex offender. So he did not object to being a level two sex offender. And the transcript showed that he was present. <laughs> he was present in court. This dumb nigga forgot about the transcripts. So he tried to say he was in jail, but really he was in court. A search of public records show that Petty wasn't locked up again in state prison until 2006. They go another lie. He said he was locked up in 2004. He didn't get locked up in 2006. My point is, he is trying to shake this dirt off his name. He's trying to get from under being a sex offender. He's been trying to get out of this. <laughs> his legal team now says he was being held on Rikers Island. Gerson, who filed the suit, told the Daily News he expects the case will be formally withdrawn in the next week or two. In 2008, Minaj addressed the attempted rape conviction and defended Petty in an Instagram post, writing he was 15 and she was 16 in a relationship. See, this is when Nicki Minaj really put her, she put her, her face in it. This is when she did too much that she didn't have to do. And what did she do? She started speaking up for him. She started co-signing him. When really... She was supposed to put him in the cut, meaning if that was your man, right? You were supposed to just lay low and people didn't have to know your baby father was. They would have found out. But my point is this. Nicki Minaj came to his defense because a lot of people started coming at her. And yes, some of it was Cardi B peoples and other people in general. A lot of people don't like Chester's. So any everybody's shoot has nothing to do with no rappers or people paying rappers to come at you. It has nothing to do with that. You're with a Chester. All right. Yes, he did when he was young. He did something stupid, but that's what happened. So people are gonna give you backlash. So that's how I go. But look, Nicki Minaj put herself in the mix by trying to defend him, and she was going hard on the fans. Basically, said he was 15 and the girl was 16, and, and they was in a relationship, and then she was cursing the internet out. But then that, after that. Because remember, if I'm not mistaken, they was dating first, then they got married, then they had the baby, something like that. Either way, she announced in 2019 that she and Petty were married. So she once again, she kept putting it on blast when she ain't have to. And part of my opinion is she got with him because he had street credibility. At a time when she was losing street credibility. You got to remember that. It's always a battle for the streets and rap. That's right. So that's right. That's right, Lady Love. Nikki talking like she was there. Exactly. That's my point. You cannot co-sign something for somebody if you wasn't there. Now, you will hope they didn't do what was alleged, but if you wasn't there, it's not an actual fact. But the point is, she was sticking her neck out going too hard for him when he was already dirty. So you couldn't save him by trying to brainwash the people because it don't work that way. Then you got to peep the internet game. When people want the internet to work in their favor, that's when the internet is real. The internet, you know, when it works in your favor. People only hate the internet when it don't work in their favor. So let's look. Last year, Petty was sentenced to three years probation after failing to register as a sex offender when, when the couple moved to California. Because let's be real. If he wasn't with Nicki Minaj, he probably wouldn't have been, been able to move to California. 
another thing is this in my opinion you can see this is when they first started trying to run but remember he will he went to california he was not reporting he did not register the sex offender he was still trying to hide in california so that's why he got three years probation because he was not complying with the sex offender registry now mind you this day business right but we wouldn't know about him if it wasn't for Nikki always putting him on front street and flexing and trying to show off her man. So every time she was showing off her man, she was actually rubbing him in the face of a particular woman and other people as well. So what can we say from this right here? We're not going to play no games. One thing we know for a fact is Nicki Minaj co-signs sex offenders, period. Why? Because, okay, it was brought up to attention. She made it a point to go hard, to take up for him. Then she made it a point to let everybody know they got married. Then she made it a point to let everybody know they had a baby. So that means she was going hard for him. And that is what is affecting her right now. And this is going to be her downfall. Maybe that was his job. Who knows? But look, the victim in the case, Jennifer Hugh, told the real because she was on the show. And she gave you on national TV in 2021 that she was waiting at a bus stop allegedly this is the story she was waiting at a bus stop when penny shoved a petty shot shoved an object against her back that she thought was a gun and directed her into a nearby house where he raped her allegedly but i don't really got to say that he's convicted he said i know what he said i know what he wanted this is what Hugh said he pushed me down on the bed we wrestled for my clothes after he was done, she said, he stood in the mirror and beat his chest and said, I'm the man, I'm the man. That's what she said he said. So basically she said he put a knife to her back, which is what rapists do. One of the tricks they do. He put something to her back. So obviously she didn't know if it was a gun or a knife, allegedly. And he walked her somewhere and allegedly this is what happened and said he beat on his chest. And said i'm the man after he got after he did what he did to her that's what she said all right but my point is it's already public record all of this is public record i'm not sitting here making up stuff we just talking about it because she made a choice to be outright with this man that's on her but this is what's destroying her career do you think little wayne and them approve of this man do you think little wayne approve of him now we know little wayne claimed blood but he probably looking at her too like damn nigga, you stupid out of all the men you got with you try to shit on Drake and everybody else, but you're going to deal with this dude. You're ruining your brand. You're ruining, you ruin CMB. Maybe that's why you, you ruin your, you're trying to ruin your money. Maybe that's why he sold a label. So I might as well cash out now because she fucking the brand though. Who knows? But my point is Lil Wayne ain't stupid. So maybe when she got on that mic and that mic was fucked up, maybe that was on purpose. Yeah. I'm not going to help you make no money. I'm not going to help you shine and you still with this clown. See that? That's my opinion. But anyway, this woman is alleged traumatized. This is Jennifer Hugh. This is the woman he got a face in court. So this is why I'm just saying he is acting like he's sick and he can't make it to court. The court date got pushed off two times already. He's subject to go back on the 24th because he has to face her. He has to face the issue. But remember, they were saying she was lying allegedly. Allegedly, she said she was getting death threats from gang members and they was trying to basically shut her down and get her out of that lawsuit long story short this is the woman you see she was on the real she told her story to the world but now it all of this stuff has brought a lot of dirt to Nicki Minaj meaning yes on, look she got her loyal fans her loyal fans are still back 100 percent but it's a whole lot of people that's not feeling her for many many different reasons y'all know she did people dirty she blackballed people she hated on people she did a lot of stuff and a lot of people are done with her so this is also then you got to remember that you got to repeat the game you see all these other female rappers coming out at a fast rate and Nicki minaj cannot keep up with all of them so my point is this this is the woman that so-called was the victim and she says she had to move to different places she had to hide out because she was getting threats and her family was getting threats that's what she said so y'all know how it is for people god forbid that have been victims victims hate to see the person that did it to him so when Nicki minaj kept showing him off 
That was a smack in the face. And she put herself in it. Just like she did with this. Because now we're going to see the pattern of this woman. She co-signed sex offenders. Nicki Minaj's brother, Jelani Mirage, gets 25 years to life for raping his stepdaughter. A lot of people forgot about this. But a lot of people didn't. What's up, Rondell? Because this right here. What up, New York Lynx? What's up, y'all? Yeah, we up. What's up, Mia High? Check it out. A lot of people did not forgive her for none of this stuff. Do you think that's a coincidence? Now, while her brother was going to trial, her brother was going to trial already. You got to pay attention to timelines, right? Her brother was going to court for these allegations right here that got him 25 years. What? Raping his stepdaughter. He was going to court for this. And while he was going to court, she still got with the, with her, with the man she with now. That's a sex offender. She got with him while her brother was going to court. What does that mean? She co-signed sex offenders. Let's use our brain. Out of all the men on the planet, out of all the men Nicki Minaj could have, why did she pick this particular man? Did he remind her of her brother? Who knows? Did her brother used to do that to her? Who knows? Right? We don't know. Her brother could have used to finesse her when she was little. This dude is weird. That's why his dumb ass got 25 years in prison. Nicki Minaj's brother on Monday was sentenced to 25 years to life behind bars for repeatedly raping his 11-year-old stepdaughter as a judge laced into him, ruining the girl. He ruined a young girl. See that? This is why a lot of people done with Nicki because of her filthy-ass brother and her filthy-ass husband. These two individuals that she put herself with, they the part of the ones that fucked her career up, but she fucked her own career up by fucking with these people. And nobody's going to fuck ruin their brand dealing with shit like this. Not nobody that's already established on a certain level. Jelani Mirage appeared, appeared stuck in a Long Island courtroom before he learned his fate following his conviction for predatory sexual assault and acting in a manner injurious to a child. Her brother was raping his own stepdaughter for years and threatening her and saying he going to get... He, if she don't do what he say, he going to make sure she end up in a foster care. He going to make sure she end up in adoption. And guess what? The sad thing about it is he was penetrating her backside. I guess that's something Chester's do. Anyway, he was penetrating a young girl backside. His own stepdaughter for years. And Nicki Minaj still was co-signing his Mind you, she got her husband while her brother was in court for being a sex offender, a weirdo. Then on top of that, what she do? She went to go visit him. So what she do, y'all? She was affiliating herself with her brother. Now, I'm going to keep it real. I know some of y'all talk that family shit. But if this was my brother, his ass cut off, period. Yeah, you still my bro, but you did some fuck shit, bro. I don't fuck with you like that. I can't fuck with you, bro. And I don't care. Same thing if I had a brother and he killed the old lady. On some trying to rob or shit. I'm not fucking with him no more. That's me. I'm not going to make no excuse. Fuck that. You's a, you did some piece of shit. And part of that, you know why? I'm going to tell you how the main reason behind that. It's because of the bad karma. See, when you cut somebody off, you're actually supposed to cut them off because of their bad karma, their bad energy that they bring you. When you deal with certain people that got certain shit on them and you affiliate yourself with them, that shit rubs off on you, whether you know it or not. So I'm showing you. By Nicki Minaj dealing with her brother, dealing with a registered sex offender, it rubbed off on her. That is why she is falling right now, because you are the company you keep and you are who you affiliated with. And this is something called spiritual energy, bad energy. And that bad energy is on Nicki. So therefore, she has been falling ever since behind the scenes. But due to social media and her having her own marketing team called the Barbs, they've been keeping her afloat. When you... Look on Twitter sometime and you see trending topic. Sometimes those are the people who paid the trend for the day. That's why when you look at the trending topic, you say, how the fuck they trended? And they don't even got no music out. They ain't even got no movie out. They ain't even got nothing going on. You'll just see a whole bunch of tweets of old stuff. That's paid marketing. But Nicki Minaj visited her brother in jail after child rape conviction. See, after. Look at the date, 2017. See that? She was dealing with her brother heavy. What else I showed you? 
she didn't marry her husband until 2019. That's my proof that she was busy taking off for this dude being a rapist. Everybody was telling her he's a sex offender coming at her head. She was taking up for him, right? Trying to come at this woman, right? Trying to threaten her, allegedly. And while all this was going on, you was already visiting your brother before that. So your brother was already convicted. Then you got with another convicted sex offender. That was a nail in your own coffin. And it shows you a nasty gal. You're nasty. Because maybe you might have been a victim when you was young too. And they say some people that be victims, they, they like when other people get dealt with. Allegedly. It's hard to imagine rap superstar Nicki Minaj doing anything under the radar, but she quietly visited her convicted child rapist brother in a Long Island jail last week, according to a new report. See what that? See how the article wrote it? Convicted child rapist brother. See? And she went to go see him. So you don't think she didn't know she was taking a risk, affiliating herself with him, but she did not care because she was not getting no good advice. This is when she was all caught up in what she was doing. So I'm showing you play by play. It's decisions she made that got her where she at. This is not just to say, oh, Nicki Minaj career over with. She done. I ain't saying that. All right? I'm saying that the shit she did, she is not on the upper echelon no more. They don't fuck with her like that. Just like Chris Brown and the rest of them. It's a lot of them that, that's in the same spot. What up, Wax? What's good? What's up, bro? I see you up in here. What's up, Yak? I see you sliding through here. What's up? Anyway, like I said, this is about decisions, arrogance, ignorance. And it's also showing you how when them people done with you, they will dispose of you. Yeah, you're going to have the money you got to sit on. You're going to chill. You're good, but you ain't going to get no more, and you ain't going to be at that level you was at. And some of this stuff... Remember, Remy was saying how she was behind the scenes blackballing, doing a whole lot, hiding her hands. But with this stuff, she didn't hide her hands. She was outright. Okay? So that's two sex offenders she co-signed, not just dealt with, not just, she co-signed them in the public, all right? Co-signed them in the public. Therefore, this is why she's going through a lot of stuff. So like I said, let's rewind. When she came out on that rolling loud and that mic wasn't working, that was not no coincidence at all. Because that is the black ball game. Make her look like a fool when she on the stage. Embarrass her. She thought she was going to steal a night. No, we're going to fuck her night up. Because they said Lil Wayne was laughing the whole time. I saw him laughing and clowning. He, he did not say, yo, DJ, get that music right. He didn't say nothing. She was doing all the talking. <laughs> she was doing all the talking and Lil Wayne was just being quiet, hitting the blunt. But I know that was slick trolling. That was straight clowning. I get it. Because Lil Wayne know what's up. Anyway, let's continue on. Now, I'm going to show you, in my opinion, why she got with him. Because he has street credibility. Kenneth Petty allegedly is a blood. But I don't know how a man with sex stuff on his background ever became a blood. Because bloods do not co-sign and beat, rob, and rape in women. That is not co-sign. That is a violation. So I don't even know how he so-called was blood in the first place and how he was able to be blood this long. But anyway, that's not the point. The point is she got with him for street credibility because you got to remember around this time, Cardi B and them was on her ass. Remember? Remember the bar fights and all that? Do y'all remember this that beef was cooking? And a lot of beef started cooking against Nikki really when she was with Meek Mill. People forget that. She had already started falling from grace when she was rocking with Meek Mill. So at that time, she realized that Meek was a chump. And don't forget, how did Meek Mill get with Nikki? He told on Safari. He was backbiting and pillow talking against Safari. Safari at least protected her. At least. He had her best interest in hand. We got to get Safari that. Because when she was with Safari, she did not have half the problems she got now. You got to give him that. But the point is, Jelani Mirage, 38. Now, this is back to her brother, all right? This is back to her brother, and this is part of her shame. 
her brother named was Jelani, a bitch ass dude. Jelani Mirage, 38, who allegedly threatened to have the girl, the little girl he was accused, the little girl he got 25 years for. He was threatened to have her taken away from her mother if she did not comply with his sick plans. Even instructed her on how to make anal sex less painful as he abused her. The victim at the time they was in court was only 13 years old. He was doing it from 11. But by the time the child was 13, the child had enough strength to sit in court and address him. So this is more proof that what? All of these so-called victims that was raped, but they don't want to sit in the court in a and face their accuser or face put it like this not pardon me all the people we know right now that claim somebody raped them if they don't want to sit in the court that shows they not really with the smoke because if somebody raped you and you're cut and you're fucking grown and you got a chance to face them and you don't want to face them that means you're full of shit get it i'm gonna say it again if you were a victim of rape and you get a chance to address the person that fucked your life up, wouldn't you do it? Well, let's give let's give clout to the young girl that was 13 years old and had the heart to face her accuser. So how can a 13 year old face the person that raped her? But you got grown men, grown women that got raped and they claim people raped them and they don't do shit. They still scared to face their person that did it to them. So we got to salute a 13 year old for facing her accuser. That's why his ass got 25 years in jail and he can't do it no more. See, but some people, they claim they've been raped and abused and molested. They let their killer walk around to this day. So what they say, do rapists ever stop raping? Do killers ever stop killing? Do robbers ever stop robbing? So if a person was a rapist in the 80s, 90s, early 2000s, what the hell you think they still doing in 2023? This is why a lot of this stuff go on because the people are know who's doing it and they won't say nothing and they won't do nothing. And they let them get other family members and other friends. They let it spread because some people that get violated, they like when other people get violated. Oh, he got you too. They like that shit. Anyway, let's continue on. My point is this, this was the girl said in court. He will call me his puppet. And I had no say in what he did to me. The girl said wearing glasses and with her hair pulled back in a ponytail on the stand. So a 13-year-old girl faced her accuser. Who was her accuser? Nicki Minaj's brother. That's why his dumb ass got 25 years to life. And it also shows that facing your accuser, or should I say facing the person that victimized you, it takes power. And it's something that really you got to want to do. Anytime a 13-year-old could face the person that violated her for years, she is a soldier, and everybody else that is scared to face their accuser is a coward, or they liked it. One of the two. But Nicki Minaj knew all of this. She knew about everything, her brother's conviction, all of that, and she still got with a Chester, all right? So I'm showing you repetitively the nail she put in her own coffin. But she got with him for clout. Now let's let's take a look. Is Nicki Minaj part of the Bloods? Nicki Minaj denies having any gang affiliation. Nicki Minaj slammed her husband, Kenneth Petty's rape accuser, Jennifer Hugh, for claiming that Minaj and her partner are gang affiliated. The Queen's rapper explained why she was mistaken for being associated with the Bloods during a recent court appearance. See that? So they was going to court for this stuff still, but if I'm not mistaken, Nikki is out of it. But long story short, I seen she just put out another song talking about blood, basically. Some shit called Red Ruby, something like that she put out. She's still trying to fill herself with the bloods. Why? For street credibility. I told y'all that people been using that gang shit for a marketing scheme for the past 15, 20 years. If you claim a gang, it will guarantee you a certain amount of street cred and a certain amount of record sales and streams. This is why you'll see every goddamn rapper had to be gang affiliated some kind of way. And Nikki did the same thing. Why? I'm going to show you because her gimmicks started running out. All her gimmicks ran out and all her gimmicks were for to influence children. That's why I told you most people got on Nikki when they were younger. I seen a, a young girl say, a girl 21 years old, telling Nikki, I was listening to you since I was seven. 
because she has influenced mentally a lot of women. But my point is this. She brought all this shit on herself. Now watch. See? She claimed that she wasn't, she not gang affiliated. And I know goddamn well she ain't no gang banger. But I'm going to show you how people like her use gangs for clout. Because this is fucking Google. <laughs> you feel me? Is Nicki Minaj part of the... Why would they even ask that question? Because obviously they know some shit. The nigga you with is blood, allegedly. And you was bragging about it because you had beef with Cardi B. And you was trying to make a statement that you affiliated. And they need to leave you alone. And this nigga had you throwing it up. But little did you know, this is going to be more nails in your coffin. Because now you hang up with sex offenders. Now you claiming gang. But in reality, I'm here to tell everybody, you cannot be blood and be a sex offender at the same time. It just don't work that way. That's called off with your kufi. It don't work like that. So I'm showing you how they brought all the shenanigans to the gang. And they got passes for money. But how can you deny something when you're throwing it up? And this nigga is just letting you Throw it up because he don't care. He's there to watch you and watch the bag. And maybe he's the one be keeping you high and stupid. And maybe that's why your career going down the gutter. See? She posted that on her Facebook. See that? November 26, 2018. Now, mind you, this uh, this after her brother got convicted. Let me show you. Brother convicted. Visit her brother. 2017. With the sex offender. Kenneth Petty. See it right here? 2018. What she's saying, y'all, you know the you know the fucking vibes. Look at that. She let you know, you know what time, you know what's popping. It's blood over here. You know the vibes. Hashtag QGTM, Queens get the money. So at this time, she was bragging. This was she she first started putting it out there. Yeah, I'm with the blood. Yeah, I'm on, I'm on blood time now, Cardi. Yeah, Cardi, I got blood back in now. See? That's what all this was about. And it was the same time as this. Y'all remember this? It was all around the same time. Because she already knew Cardi B was taking over the streets. Now, when Cardi B was on Love and Hip Hop, remember she was dropping her little mixtapes. Nikki didn't see her as a threat then. But when Cardi B got in position and she started being outright with her blood behavior, and yes, she used the New York Bloods as well to get where she at, but we ain't going there today. The point is, she already knew Cardi B had the streets, Cardi B had the Bloods, she had the whole New York City, and she had America. And she know Nikki knows she had no leg to stand on. She had no gangster in her, no gangster going on nowhere. So get her, get with Kenneth Petty was a desperate move because she needed some street ties, street cred. Because Cardi B was on her ass musically, right? And street wise, Cardi got the streets. Let's be real at the time. And this is why Nikki had to do the same thing. So like I said before, you got to peep. If you notice, Nikki and Cardi hate each other, but they still both copy off each other. I don't know if y'all noticed that. I, if I had time for all that shit, I could have pulled up them looking like each other on, on, on 10 different pictures. Same hairstyle, everything. Because sometimes the person you don't like, you can slickly admire. The same way if people that don't like me and want to troll, well, they're going to get up early in the morning and they're going to listen every day. That's how I go. Your haters are your number one supporters and your best secret admirers. That's just how the shit work. So they've been cloning each other. But this move she made throwing up blood was desperate because of Cardi B. All right. But let's take a look back. Now we're going to go back a little bit. Let's ask a question. Would Nikki be in a situation she in now, she would have just got with Drake and stayed with Drake or something like that. Drake, the biggest rapper right now. So remember when Nikki got with Drake? Remember she tried to play Drake? Ah, uh, she did Meek. Then remember after she she stopped fucking with Meek? Remember Drake and Meek did a song together on purpose despite her? That was the shit on her. We see two rappers that had beef. Drake and Meek had real beef. They squashed their beef and made a song together despite Nikki, because Nikki had shit it on both of them. And my point is, this is also some of the things she was doing. That was getting her blackball because we know Drake said at the top of the game now. When it comes to this rap game, Drake is at the top of the food chain now. Whether you like it or not, he is the Jay-Z of the rap game right now. As far as business-wise, far as credibility, touring shows, his stock is up.
His influence is up. I'm just saying on that level. I am not talking about compete, comparing lyrics and all of that. I'm saying as far as his status in the so-called rap game. I'm not talking hip-hop. Rap, the rap game is controlled by you-know-who. Drake is at the top of the rap game. But imagine, let's just fantasize. Let's, let's say if Nicki and Drake got, got serious at the time and they was a couple. Can you imagine how big they would be to this day? So you got to understand something. Drake trying to get with you. Look where he at now. But now you with him. Do you see how low that is But beneath the totem pole? That's like some low level shit to the industry. So you can see how they you see how they frown upon her. Like basically, you had a chance to be with Drake. You could you could be you you gonna pick this dude. You gonna pick you gonna pick this dude, a sex offender, a, a regular low level street nigga, over Drake, over me. See, that's like that was like her pissing it when she did that. Allegedly, in my opinion, that was like her pissing off the industry. Meaning, this was enough. To have all the men in the industry turn their back on her. You get it? Even if it's out of jealousy, but she did it despite them. This was also a move, basically. Well, no, she when she got with him, no, that was saying too, you industry niggas, y'all bitches. Like, I don't fuck with none of you industry dudes. Y'all all clowns, y'all suckers. I'm gonna get a real street nigga. Y'all fake niggas. So I'm gonna get a street nigga. That's what she did. But when she got a so-called real street nigga, she offended the other niggas, meaning the so-called industry dudes. So she offended a lot of people. And we already know this was a marketing, marketing employee too. Because every time at the time when Nikki was losing a little feedback from the street, she would bust a move. When you go back and look at all the pictures with her and Meek, the shits look fake. It looked like you could tell they all look stage. And we know for a fact Meek couldn't have been hitting that right because she just easily left his ass. <laughs> then remember when uh, Meek and Kenneth Petty, they all bumped heads in the store. I forgot what store. Gucci store somewhere, but they say, what, Meek ain't want no smoke. And Meek had his whole team with him. Even though Meek jumped Safari, he ain't want to jump Kenneth Petty. <laughs> so my point is, the street credibility that he had, Nicki knew how to use it to her advantage. But my point is this. After all of this, you'll see at this same time where all this was going on, her beefing with Cardi, trying to claim blood, Cardi B was at the top. And that's when you see now, when you see Cardi B doing this at this event, this is when Cardi B was being crowned king, queen of the industry. So you got to look. It was the time Nikki had what? The streets and she had the industry. Meaning what? She had the pop, pop music, right? She had the white people loving her and she had the streets. But then you'll see as Cardi B started coming up, Cardi B already had the streets. But this is when Cardi B captured the white people. So you could say this is when Cardi B sold out. Also, they got her dressed up like the beast that's in Revelation. That's supposed to represent the beast with seven heads. Long story short, that represents the queen of Babylon. Either way, Cardi B did that ritual in front of all of them because that's when she became elite amongst them people. You see all the Hollywood white people taking their pictures? Also, when you see it close up, it looked like it's a it's a dragon tail, like it's a tail. Long story short, anyway, this is when Cardi B had already sold out, y'all. This is when she became the favorite amongst the elite, and the elite made her the favorite to spite Nikki. Because, you know, remember, Nikki was speaking out against the Grammys. Remember, she rubbed a lot of people the wrong way. White people, black people, important people. She rubbed a lot of people the wrong way. So you, you know how they do it. You know how they say they're going to fix her ass? All they're going to do is make Cardi a star. We'll, we'll, we'll replace you. One thing about the industry, they will replace you so quick if they got a problem with you. They'll find another one. We'll get another Chris Brown. We'll get another Arca. You see what I'm saying? That's what they do. But this is when Cardi B officially sold out. And for the people in the streets had no clue that she wasn't with the street no more. But my point is, Nikki had lost the streets and she lost the industry at this point. So she was already being blackballed, but it was happening little by little, and she still got money in the big name to fight it. So blackballing her is not the same like somebody else. But the only way to tell, you'll see nobody major with a major brand is really going to fuck with her like that. That's why Why you think lately, when she did all those remixes with Corey LeRae, and we noticed she's been doing songs with people under her and up-and-coming people. 
for one, to keep her name hot, for two, the people up under her are naive, and she's only going to deal with people under her. The people over her, they don't want no parts of her. So I'm just showing you, in my opinion, that's why when she was on the stage with Wayne, that motherfucking equipment started malfunctioning as soon as it was time for her to turn up on her part. And she got tight. And she started talking shit to the DJ because they was blackballing her. But she's the same one that says she believes other female rappers, other female rappers' labels pay for diss tweets. She's still trying to say it's people paying to shut her down. Not really, because you shutting yourself down by the shit you did. What's happening is the things you did are now coming back to haunt you. That's it. So let's continue on. Salute to the chat. What up, man? Let me holler at y'all real quick. What up, Ty105? Big Phil. What's up, Big Phil? What's up, Jason? What's good, y'all? What's up what y'all doing out here? Sir Junior. What's up, A? We up in here. Anyway. Yeah, I came on early today, y'all. We here. Now I'm going to show you something else. This is like the last stage I'm going to show you with uh, this uh, Nicki Minaj, right? All her gimmicks have ran out. No more gimmicks, no more marketing schemes. Her last gimmick was the claim street, meaning she had already sold out a long time ago. And you got to remember when you sell out, sometimes you can't come back to the streets. So her last attempt to come back to the streets was to claim a gang. That's why I told you her recent song she just dropped. I just saw it. It's called Red Ruby something. Either way, Red Ruby sleeves. Long story short, she's talking blood talk. All right? But that's her last gimmick. And now I'm going to show you her all her gimmicks that fucking ran out already. And I'm going to show you how the whole time she was marketing the kids. So if she was marketing the kids... Let's use our brain. The kids now have many more selections of female rappers, right? Let's name some of the hottest female rappers right now that the young people are digging. Ice Spice, Glorilla, Lotto, Cardi B, Megan, and a few others. All Everyone I just said, the young people, they on them. Only people still on Nikki is the people in their 30s and 40s and up. 30, like 30 something and up. But even the people in their 30s and up, not really on Nicki like that. They still got love for her, but they're not really into her music like that. Because I'm going to show you, most of y'all got older, and I'm going to show you how she was marketing the kids the whole time, or bitches that are childish. Childish mentality. When she was rapping that young, dumb voice, that y'all know that voice, you put it like this. Y'all know she got more than one voice. You know she got the voice when she rapping hard. When she be talking about bitches, her sons, and then she got the kitty voice when she act like a little goofy child. But that's her appeal to children. All right? And I already showed you this before. I'm going to show you again. See that, Chun Lee? All of this was for kids and childish women. But it was also a gimmick and a marketing tool from the real Chun Lee. We grew up playing Street Fighter. A lot of the homies know, bro, we, we grew up playing Street Fighter when we was. Teenagers, 14, 15, feel me, 13. This also, we got to remember, we was young. This was some of our first look between woman legs, and we started noticing certain things on the female characters. It was through cartoons, remember? A lot of men, boys, we started having crush on cartoon characters first. <laughs> My point is, this is a marketing tool to kids, see? And I'm also showing you culture vulture, and I'm showing you cloning. To play on the psyche, which I'm showing you gimmicks. That whole Barbie was a gimmick. All this shit is gimmicks. No disrespect to nobody with nobody named Barbie. It's not, it's not about that. I'm showing you her gimmicks that have run outs. Cartoon characters. See that? Chun Li. But some people don't know Chun Li is from a, a, a famous video game, Street Fighter. That's what we grew up on. So that ain't original. That's a that's a that's a that's a gimmick. It's a gimmick. You've been selling gimmicks, Nikki. And they work on kids. But see, now the kids got older. That shit ain't working. See? What is the biggest mind control program that they ran in America? On kids and grown people. The Barbie. I know that. That's why I said 
when you a child, that's different. But you got to remember, this is the woman that was sent to make children fast in the ass. She also had a large support from the rainbow community. Those were her two marketing schemes back then. Why am I saying that? You'll see back then she was never trying to promote no blood, no street activity. She was on some sexual stuff, and y'all know where that come from. But the main sexual agenda she was really pushing was being nasty was to what? People in the rainbow community and to children. That's why I'm going to say it again. Most of y'all that grew up off of her, you were young. This was a, see, Barbie is one of the mind control symbols. As soon as any 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 woman see this, this will automatically bring you to your childhood. This is also that whole Barbie ploy. Remember when she was doing the Barbie thing? She was rapping in that kid voice. That was a dumb down event, meaning that was a dumb woman down. That's all I'm trying to tell you, right? Her career was based on playing on the minds of people. So I'm just showing you her gimmicks are over. Cartoon, character, video game, Chun-Li, Barbie, played out. People don't want to hear that shit no more. They'd rather hear Glorilla because she rap hard. My point is this. Also, I want to show y'all how Barbie was able to capitalize on all of this stuff. And let's take a look at who they marketing to. Barbie. When have you ever seen a Barbie doll damn near $50? Barbie signature look doll. <laughs> the black Barbie doll. It's curvy. Brunette with fully past posable fashion doll wearing black jumpsuit gift for collectors. <laughs> what are they trying to say? That's how black woman dress? That's how black woman look? Why she had to have the nappy hair? Why she had to have a nappy fro? Anyway, that Barbie doll worth damn near $50. I don't know no mother in the hood that's just going to sit there and buy they, they baby no Barbie doll for $50. But the point is, all that Barbie talk, I wanted to just show you how these brands capitalize off that shit. And remember, she tried to put out something recently with Barbie and they shut that shit down. That's another sign her shit is over with. See this? This is also a mockery to the black community, man. Barbie Extra Doll, number 14, in fashion accessory. This one is $26. See that? <laughs> that doll might as well be called Keisha, right? But thank Nicki Minaj for that. See? And she ain't getting paid off none of that shit. See? Got the Barbie chain on her. See, look. See that? They think they know black people, man. <laughs> but look how much Bobby dolls cost now, y'all. You see the inflation? <laughs> Shit crazy, right? But being that we talking about cartoon characters, now we got to look into some real shit. I'm going to get back into this topic, but I wanted to show y'all play by play how Nikki done put all gimmicks, all gimmicks ran out. Her man, is her husband is ducking court right now. He has to face a situation in the New York courts. And he has been trying to get off the sex registry. And I'm showing you her support of her brother. And her husband is part of the main reasons why she going through this. But that's her fault for co-signing sex offenders. And I'm also showing you how she don't care about nobody that got offended. Because the whole time she was marketing the kids anyway. And I told y'all, all the reasons I'm talking about a lot of this, when kids are fast now, young girls fast now, their ass get snatched. Sex trafficking, human trafficking. And... That's what all this goes with. So now let's get off of this cartoon character to another cartoon. Bingo. How many of y'all know about this? What does that say? This is from the show called what? The Simpsons. Y'all know the Simpsons are the number one people that know everything that's going to happen before it happened? Silicon Valley Bank. Ha, ha, ha. I see that talk that's going on. What's the number one news going on? Sil Silicon Valley Bank crashing, right? How many of y'all knew it was already on the Simpsons? <laughs> yeah, I've been on my work. How many of y'all knew this? Check it out. The bank crashed. <laughs> I told you, man. Life is a joke. Life is a movie. It's a game. All you got to do is pay attention. Die Simpson. This is a 1994 episode. Silicon Valley Bank crash. Tech has been out, but it's at the it's at the highest level of it right now. 
The Simpsons already knew the bank was going to crash. <laughs> what does that mean, y'all? <laughs> what does that mean? See? The chosen know what's happening before everyone. I know I do. That's right. That's right. You will get all the signs you're supposed to get if you're in the loop. What up, Rondell? Said I remember the episode. Yep. Out of here. Bank crash. That's why I remember I said it on the show. I was like, look, and even for look, we all have to go back into the session. Like, I'm gonna have to probably just watch the whole thing. Like, because we we only we gotta remember it's stuff in there that they showed us that happened already, but it's still a whole lot of stuff that probably happened that we, you know what I'm saying? They showed us that didn't happen yet. Because they also understood this a long time ago. When you put truth in somebody's face, you put it in a cartoon. The cartoon is also how they teach their people. See, we act like, see, people talk about the Illuminati and all these people, right? But we act like they don't have children and kids and family members. Well, this is how they teach their kids. They teach their kids through cartoons and comic books. That's why cartoons and comic books always got the agenda in it as well. That's how they teach their kids. They teach their kids about witchcraft through cartoons. Harry Potter, stuff like that. Harry Potter is how they get their kids into witchcraft early. See, it's a lot of stuff that are for their kids too, mainly how they teach their kids. Anyway, let's continue on. See, it's a joke, y'all. So is life mimicking the Simpsons? If it is, that means life is a fucking joke, y'all. Life ain't nothing but a cartoon. <laughs> That's why I always time getting mad at stuff because it's all a joke. So let's continue on to Mr. John Morant. And I know y'all saw this over the weekend. And they're making it a point to put John Morant on blast. <laughs> I don't know what John Morant is on. I don't know what this man is doing. Ain't this much being drunk in the world talking about he got a problem with Hennessy and all this stuff. they making a point to put this man on Front Street. Y'all see, this is beyond making it rain. But look... <laughs> Let's take a look. The whole, this is the people that, that was at the club, that run the club talking about the situation and what happened. Basically, the whole room is full of money. It's literally a pile. You'll need a rate to get it up. According to one club insider who witnessed the eye-popping hardwood scene, the vaunted 23-year-old point guard who re-signed with the Grizzlies last year in a five-year extension deal that could be worth up to $231 million he shelled out at least 50000 in cash, tips in the two-night booty bender, two employees told the Post. So he was there two nights straight, and he spent like 50 racks. So you know a lot of people was happy, but that boy was tricking his ass off in the middle of the season. Now, mind you, when you're in the NBA, they're really supposed to do stuff like this in the offseason. See, if he was in the offseason doing this thing, there wouldn't be no big problem. But when you're doing this in the middle of a season, this is considered a distraction because they look at it like he's supposed to be resting, taking care of himself, and chilling. But you know how it is, too, in the world where you got a lot of money, a lot of stress, a lot of things going on, and you, and you, you want to be young and have fun. But people got to understand, all that trying to have fun sometimes is going to get you in trouble. Common sense. If he never would have went out that night, he never would have got in trouble. But that man had to be lit on some shit. Now, mind you, anyway... This man is in the club getting to it. <laughs> it is just funny how the New York Post and other media outlets made sure they put it on blast. Look at the food. Look at all the goddamn money, man. <laughs> Come on, y'all. Who going to pay 50000 for all that nonsense, man? He could have got a better chick than that, too, man. <laughs> anyway, they said that boy was lit up in that spot that night. That boy was lit. <laughs> so, look. They say that money took forever to count. A dancer recall her colleague saying, the club insider said Morant arrived at Shotgun Willie's with a friend and two security guards around 1.30 a.m. Just hours after the Grizzlies mauled the Rockets in a Houston 113-99 game. I'm pretty sure John Morant went, went to the back room and had him a VIP too. <laughs> he only had one homeboy and two security guards. Long story short, they was at Shotgun Willie's, which is a known place in Colorado, where they say... The Denver Nuggets go, the Denver Broncos. This is where the celebrities go at when they're in Colorado. 
and other people. That's right. Blame it on the alcohol. <laughs> anyway. This time he broadcasted himself on Instagram as he dangled a gun, belted the lyrics to bring him out by the rapper Young Boy Never Broke Again. See, that's NBA Young Boy. So when he pulled out the gun, he was rapping the NBA Young Boy. But after that, they started calling John Morant NBA Dumb Boy. Because this is when he pulled the gun out. The same night he was doing this, he was doing this. So, and we know in that picture, John Morant looked more than drunk, man. <laughs> you see this, man? You see what the influence of hip-hop do, want to be hood, want to be street? This, this man, you, you almost, almost said the N-word because he almost made me say it. You worth $213 million and you doing basic nigga shit. This is what a nigga in any hood near you is doing last night. He did it last night. He ain't throw that much money, but nigga, you're doing the same shit. But my point is this. Not only did he do that, the nigga waved the gun. While he was playing NBA Youngboy. I told y'all, right? <laughs> I hate to keep saying that, but remember when I broke down NBA Youngboy on this channel and I told you he, he influenced a lot of people too? And a lot of people have been following NBA Youngboy because NBA Youngboy got a lot of people brainwashed and under mind control too. And I was showing you a lot of people Got their swag from NBA Youngboy. Well, here you see right here. It was the song from NBA Youngboy that brainwashed John Morant to pull a gun out. <laughs> this is why. All right, let me prove something. I'm proving to you that if you dumb, rap is a mind control program. Because anytime you do something and you don't know why you're doing it, you're under a fucking mind control program. You're under a spell. This is why after John Morant did this, he had to apologize and say, damn, I need to go get help. Of course you need to get help, dummy, because you threw 50 racks in the club on a weeknight. You drunk out your mind. You pulling out guns, playing rap music. Nigga, you went to college. Your life is already planned out. You got a good life. But it was the rap music and the lifestyle of Throwing money, blow a bag that you was brainwashed under, blow a bag, blow a bag, and fuck a bitch. That's what you went to do, John Morant. And that's what almost fucked your career. And mind you, they're not done with John Morant yet. They still looking into allegedly when he beat up a 17-year-old with a gun on his waist. They looking into a situation he got into at the mall with a security guard. And they also looking into a situation where allegedly his homeboys put an infrared beam on somebody. He is still under fire. His career is still not saved yet all the way but i'm showing you anytime a regular dude that play ball that's rap music let's ask the question if he wasn't listening to no rap music you think he would have been acting this savage but what we have to understand is this generation of people that are in their young 20s 23 22 21 25 whatever they grew up under this spell <laughs> They grew up under the spell of blow a bag, fuck your money up, demon time, act a fucking fool, act a savage, anything goes, no rules, no principles, and putting everything on social media. So John Morant was a victim of everything I just told you. Because, yes, it's the newer generation, but it really ain't new. It's just a dumber generation. That's it. All right? So... John Moran got caught up in the wave and he going to see that nobody's going to be there to support him when he fall. So let's move on to what else is going on. And now we got to go back into that bank talk about that bank that crashed. They say your boy Trump was already on it years ago. Trump removed the regulations that would have prevented the Silicon Valley bank crash in May 2018. How many people knew that? Basically saying the things Trump had in place and was doing was to prevent what's going on now. So now you got two pointers to show you with the Silicon Bank stuff. But also let it be a, a, a you got to peep the signs, right? What happened to Silicon Valley is a sign that what? Other banks could do the same thing. And they saying that what? If I'm not mistaken, correct me. That's one of the first times under the uh 
under the uh federal guidelines, meaning uh what's that? The, uh I, I forgot that quick. The, the uh federal, you know how the federal government insure the money. The money is insured by the federal government, no matter what happened. They say that basically this is the first time it happened to a, a federally insured bank. So my point is this: have we not already heard about Wells Fargo playing with people's money and other banks playing with people's money? Did we not heard have we not heard that? A crash might be coming financially. Well, play by play. You see in the play by play. Then I thought about something. I said, damn, with the bank crash or whatever, whatever, why they can't pay them all back digitally? Or maybe this is to install the digital technology. Because we know if a bank shut down, what the hell they got to do with a money transaction? So anyway... Trump tried to stop what's going on right now. Whoa, here it is. The moment in 2018 when Donald Trump removed the Dodd-Frank regulations that would have prevented the Silicon Valley collapse. Don't let anyone forget this. See, they're talking about it on Twitter. I told you, it's certain people, they on it every day. They not letting go. They woke. Now, this is something else very sketchy that's going on. As you see what this person said right here, remember when Mark Zuckerberg showed you what he really was about? They are laughing while rubbing our noses in this Babylonian shit. A lot of people know they are pulling Babylon tactics because we are in Babylon. Or should I say the people that are in power and rich, they believe in Babylon. So it's people telling you. But guess what? Mark Zuckerberg is also exploring plans to launch a rival to Twitter. So let's look. He started Facebook. He bought out Instagram. Now he's coming with his own version of Twitter because Twitter is still down with free speech to an extent. And they know that Mark Zuckerberg, he likes to control what people say because he works for the people. He is down with the blue people. And the blue people like to control the media and put out their own narratives. So therefore, now he has to start his own Twitter because they are losing the fight. Twitter is putting out a lot of truth. But look what else is being said. Breaking. Georgia election board accepted $2 million from Mark Zuckerberg's group violating state law. This is why we call elections rigged. Remember they were saying the election was rigged? Well, here you have it. This is what they're saying. You see this man right here? The so-called white man? He's telling you. Georgia election board accepted $2 million for Mark Zuckerberg. Is Mark Zuckerberg a Democrat? Which state brought all the drama of the voting? Hmm. I think it was Georgia. But remember, Trump is a liar. Trump is a fraud. He's making stuff up. But now the proof is all coming out. Mark Zuckerberg gave $2 million to the election board. So what you think that is, y'all? Now let's talk about Kyrie for a second. And I'm going to get on him again this week, I think. Because it's a lot of things going on I'm seeing with Kyrie, too. Now, Kyrie, he, his sneakers popping. But this ain't about no damn sneakers. This is about... How this dude played everybody. And in my opinion, he fucked up the Brooklyn Nets on purpose. Another thing is this. Only, thing, only reason why I'm making this point because I'm seeing all this little news that he's saying. He's setting his little rant. Kyrie Irving speaks out against the children being exploited in Congo, forced to work in cobalt mines. And the only reason why I'm on this shit because I'm showing you. I've been doing my little research on Kyrie Irving yesterday, and Kyrie Irving be all over the place. How many of y'all know Kyrie Irving was claiming Muslim? Last year, how many people remember the story when he was on Ramadan? He was dealing with Islamic practices of Ramadan. That was last year. Then months after that, we've seen this man claiming Hebrew Israelite. Then we've seen this man going amongst the native tribes. He's all over the place. Then you'll see his symbol is what it is. Then you'll see him with Egyptian onks on. My point is he's all over the place. He is, he's not nothing. That is Babylon. When a person is all over the place with religion, that is Babylon. 
So my point is this. I'm not going to lie. I forgot this man was practicing Ramadan. I would have brought it up before. Now, what does that mean? You cannot be an Israelite and a Muslim at the same time. But that's what he was doing. Because he was claiming Ramadan and he was claiming Israelite. Do y'all not remember with that fake-ass march of Kyrie Irving when all those people were marching, Hebrew Israelites? And I told y'all that was on stage in a paid organization. I told y'all that. I also spoke on how Kyrie Irving job was to trick a lot of people in New York City to quit their job over that C-19 stuff. See, a lot of people, they had a, they had, see, look, a lot of people wasn't sure if they was going to quit their job or not over the vax. But Kyrie Irving, he stirred up the pot and he made it a point to make it like he ain't going back to work. He ain't taking the vax. Then what he do after that? He went back to work, didn't he? And all those people that lost their job, they was not able to go back to work. And then they had the nerve to say after that, what? In certain places, y'all going to feel me. In certain places, they outright came out and said that, what? They could not make nobody get no vax. But you got to understand, it was a lot of city workers. A lot of people lost their pension. A lot of people became homeless because they quit their job and was marching in the streets. And Kyrie Irving was the battery behind all of that. But people forgot that man is rich. At the time, he had his big-ass NBA contract, and he had his big-ass Nike contract. Kyrie Irving was paid already, and he was acting like he was for the people. But really, he was putting batteries in their back to quit their job. That's right, Big Phil. Confusion. That's Babylon. Confusion. Whenever it's a bunch of stuff going on, but nobody really knows what's going on, and people stuff is all over the place, and people confused, that's Babylon. Because we know what the Most High deals with. The Most High deals with clarity. So anything you confused about, it shall be revealed at the proper time and it will be crystal clear on what you should do. But anyway, this what really got me on his head. Look how Kyrie Irving, he's giving money to Africa. He's been giving money to a lot of causes. Kyrie Irving, he donates, he looks out. But you're going to see one thing. Kyrie Irving don't really do nothing for black people neither. And this is something else I'm showing you. When you under that umbrella... You got to do something for Africa. You have to align yourself with Africa. Let me give you a little, let's give it, let's give a little run back. Dwayne Wade and Gabrielle Union, before they did that stuff with the sun recently, didn't they not recently take a trip to Africa? Didn't I show you pictures of Jay-Z and Beyonce in Africa doing stuff? Didn't Oprah Winfrey put a school in Africa? My point is, you'll see everything they do in Africa, they don't do over here. Now, my point is this, Kyrie. The water in Mississippi is still fucked up. The water in America is fucked up in many places, whether it's brown, got lead, asbestos, fluoride, whatever. We know the water in America is fucked up. So why are these people so quick to give water overseas? Because that's what they tell them to do. Did y'all know that they were forbidden to just go in their pocket and do whatever they want for the community? They can't do that. That's where their agent comes in at. Their handler says, no, I don't think that's a good idea. Maybe you should just give it to an organization in Africa because the whole plot and plan is not to let these millions touch the community. Like I said before, if every celebrity that made it gave just a portion back to where they are from, we would not be seeing half the stuff we see. Kyrie Irving is so-called from New Jersey. But this, this is a privileged kid that went to college and he's a good boy too. So he don't know nothing about struggle. But my point is this, you're going to see they're going to do for Africa, but they're not going to do for here. Now, look, Kyrie Irving just shot the fundraiser with a 45000 donation for kids in Ghana and Nigeria. His donation will build an entire orphanage in Ghana. Pause. Orphanage. Kids. Who's the number one people that deal with kids? Oh, wait. Is that not the number? Is, is that Pizzagate people? Are they not the number one people that deal with kids? Have I not showed you Madonna in trouble right now for sneaking kids out of Africa? I told you these are the future kids that will be coming to America one day. When they set up these programs in Africa, that is really a grooming process when they act like they're over there doing work. These are some of the future Americans. So now you see why the head actor on Snowfall is black, or, or should I say African? You see how 
one of the main characters in BMF is African. Do you see how most of the Hollywood films that have been coming out the past couple of years have been African? Because they've been replacing people. But that's not the point. The point is, Kyrie, you fucked up the New York Nets. You fucked up New York, right? You're not doing shit for nobody in America. You just a talking ass nigga. Once again, you use the Hebrew Israelites. You use black people to stir up the crowd. I broke this down back then about him and Kanye came out at the same time doing the same shit because they work for the same people. It's just that Kyrie Irving is the Kanye West of the basketball people, of the, of the basketball world. The same thing Kanye do in a rap game, distract, Kanye does, Kyrie does it in basketball. And he disrupts teams and he destroys the locker room. He is a plant, in my opinion. He is now a plant because I saw this man celebrating Ramadan like a Muslim, then claiming Hebrew Israelite. Then I seen him praising Egypt. Then he was trying to be down with the flat earthers. He's all over the place. Confusion. Then I seen him backtrack from everything. So the white man backtrack from everything and say, basically, I ain't going to do with that stuff. Confusion, confusion. So my point is this. He's giving money to Africa. I need somebody to tell me what Kyrie Irving is doing right here. See, I look, you study people by their works. You talk all that shit. So they asked him, was he free? One of the parts of the video, was he free? He's like, no, I'm not free. As long as they exploiting kids and as long as this and that, he said all the reasons why he ain't free. But it had nothing to do with the real talk. Nigga, you free. You getting hundreds of millions of dollars, nigga. Kyrie, you are not oppressed. You are not with the struggle, so stop it. You are a privileged child that went to Duke College. You went to the NBA early. You've been pampered ever since. Your dad was somebody. You're not with the struggle. You've been friend like you with the struggle, trying to deceive people that are looking for enlightenment and help. You are a talker, and you're giving money and doing things for Africa and every other organization, but you're not doing nothing for nobody here. Boy, you're running your mouth. The biggest agenda is what in America right now? Kids being snatched, child sex trafficking. So if Kyrie Irving is not talking about sex trafficking, he is talking about nothing. Don't ever forget what I said. If any of these celebrities that run their mouth and act like they for the people, you talking about children being exploited in Congo. What about all the people over here overdosing the fentanyl? I mean, get reports over the weekend of some more people that have been dying. Mysterious. I'm going to tell you this right now. It's a lot of people in their 30s and 40s dying. Dying. Waking up dead, dropping dead. 30s and 40s. And these are not people that got vaccinated. These are straight hood people. That's how I know the Fetty is circulating in the streets. Heavy. But nobody talking about it. Because the death toll is going to be quiet this time. So Kyrie ain't talking about this sex trafficking. We, look, we don't care about no kids in Africa because y'all probably going to sex traffic them. I'm going to be honest. Y'all probably going to bring them here. Why? That is an orphanage. That's an orphanage. So it's nothing to take them orphans and bring them back over here, right? Another thing about the NBA. A lot of y'all don't watch the NBA. The NBA has the most African basketball players in history right now. The most African, the most immigrant, the most people that are not from here in, in the NBA right now. But I also had to show you Kyrie Irving, or he been made his trip to Jimmy Kimmel. Remember I showed you Kanye West the other day? Did I not show y'all? For those that didn't see the episode, I broke all this shit down Friday. About what? Kanye West does not like black people. And in this video, I showed you all the doors he go through. And he went through the Jimmy Kimmel door. Remember, doors are not just sexual shit. It's certain places they have to go through. Like, you know, a walkthrough, Certain doors they have to walk through when they get to certain levels. Jimmy Kimmel is one of them. And Jimmy Kimmel is a straight, outright Democrat. He does not hide it. He is affili affiliated with all the Pizzagate people. Jimmy Kimmel is another one. Every day Trump was in office, he was bashing him on his show. And Kyrie Irving, Ben made his run to Jimmy Kimmel because he's down with the people. Hollywood. Kyrie is an actor. This is when they're joking on the flat earth because they made a mockery of the flat earth movement. Let me go back into that flat earth movement. For people, a lot of y'all been on the internet, y'all know what's up. 
That's right, Shireen. They got NBA Africa come on Sunday. I was, I ain't watch it. I watched a little bit of it, but when I watch the NBA channel every Sunday at a certain time, they play games straight from Africa. Africa got their own basketball league now under the NBA. They are grooming African players right now to plug them into America when they get their skills up. So I'm telling you, when I was telling you it's all over, I know what I'm talking about because I've seen it. I see the preparation in Africa as far as with entertainment, basketball, you already know, Afro beats, all of the cultures that we indulged in that got us to the next level, got us out of the hood, turned us from nothing into something off of our talent. Those are now taken from us. Maybe we gave it away. But my point is this. People got to remember that flat earth stuff was taken off. And don't get this twisted. A lot of people that's under oath, they know about flat earth. <laughs> but their job is to keep the secret. So they got to play the game. Because when that flat earth stuff started taking over, it was a big wave of people saying the earth was flat. They called them flat earthers. But they had to label them as weirdos. So Kyrie Irving's job was to get them labeled as weirdos and to make them lose steam. Because they understand that flat earth was starting to influence a lot of people. Just like the moon landing, right? They understood that. So Kyrie Irving, his job was to troll the flat earthers. And make a mockery of it. But when you sit down with Jimmy Kimmel, that is, that is the door to let you know he is down with Hollywood. So the whole time, Kyrie Irving is an actor. He's just an actor that plays basketball. You see, these people got people in every department, every arena. They got people in your job. They got people on the street acting like they're drug dealers. They got people in the NBA. They got people in the game, in the rap game. They got people. These are plants. They are controlled. Their job is to distract, disrupt, and confuse. And that's what they get paid for. Do you think Kyrie Irving is really for black people? And he getting all his money and sending him to Africa? He talk a good one. He sound good. But in reality, he with them people. Because once I see him sit down with Jimmy Kimmel, once I saw this, I already know what time it is. Hollywood. So he, he acting like he gets the powers that be, but you see he's he still good, right? Did he not just go to the Dallas Mavericks after requesting a trade for the Nets? Because they robbed the Brooklyn Nets. They robbed them. They played a game. They came to New York and disrupted that shit and deceived the people of New York. They went to the Brooklyn Nets because when they looked at all 30 teams, the Brooklyn Nets had the most money available. They were so thirsty, they paid Kevin Durant for a contract when he was hurt. Therefore, people that know sports, the media had already caught Kyrie and KD in the hallway talking about going to New York. But they after that, they tried to deny it, said, man, we ain't going to New York. Man, they just talking. Y'all know what y'all talking about. Then right after that, what they do, went to New York. And when they went to New York, it was in shambles. It was chaos. Then you got a peak game. They really went to New York during the pandemic. And then as soon as the pandemic over with and the migrants coming in, Kyrie left. See that? What does that mean? Maybe the whole agenda was to crash New York. Maybe it was to crash because they crashed the Brooklyn Nets. They gave the people false hope. He tricked a lot of people to lose their job, and they left the Nets and both tried to go to winning playoff teams. They finessed New York City, y'all. Kyrie finessed New York. See that? This is why I'm going to keep telling people, you don't got to co-sign somebody because of where they from. Fuck all that where they from. That don't mean shit. It's where their mind is at. So in my opinion, let's just look at his works. When Kyrie came to New York City, did he do more damage or did he help the city out? Looks to me like he did more damage because the Brooklyn Nets still where they at. They took them people money. He tricked a lot of people to quit. He caused a lot of chaos and confusion. People marching in the street. Drama. Knowing that New York is a heavy Jewish populated city, he started up all that Hebrew Israelite controversy in New York City which kept the people divided and distracted and confused. That was his job. Then after the confusion, he left, and now he's in Dallas. See that? He played us. So, yeah, listen to what people say, y'all, but stop believing what they say. Don't get caught up on their shit. I use them as entertainment only. That's it. 
So you see the games and you see all this shit coming to an end. It already is at the end. We had the end of the blunt, like I told you. But I had to bring up this thing with Nikki because two news articles came out. And now she is saying that she believes record labels are paying people to diss her. But I already told you before, she was paying record labels and companies to diss her ops. All of these companies are disguised as Barty Gang, Barbie Gang, Beehive. Those are grown ass people paid to be online and push brands. I'll give you an example. Yeah, see how when you be online, they sell you merch? It's merch popping up, and you always see within the merch, you got comments. How many of y'all went, looked on a place on Google and looked up a restaurant, a bar, anything, and you see it got stars on it, right? Ratings. When you see those comments, you'll start seeing some of those comments are fake. I really love this place. This place is outstanding. You'll see perfect statements with blank pages. That's why I told people on my channel, have your avatar because you look like a fucking troll. And when you say stuff and you ain't got no avatar, I really don't pay attention to what you say sometimes. I don't really pay attention because that is troll behavior. Meaning a lot of fake ass pages have, you know, you get it? No avatar. So when you start looking at these ratings on Google, start reading the comments and you'll start seeing what I mean with fake ass comments. Those are from marketing companies. Let's like say if I got a brand right now. Say I come out with a coffee. Nobody knows about the coffee. I have to pay a marketing company and a promotional company to help me push the brand. So as I'm sharing my coffee on the internet on all platforms, the companies will back me by commenting on it, by liking it, by sharing it. You get it? That's what you pay a marketing company for. So in a game of social media, all people with a name knew to pay certain marketing groups and add fake subscribers. The reason why they're called fake subscribers because they are not really into what they're liking, but they are real people hitting the like button. It's just that it could be it could be a it could be a man named Tony Romero, and he in Phoenix somewhere. He liking the, the rap. He liking a video, but he not even into the shit. His job is to hit the like button. That's what he. That's what these companies are paid to do. That's why I said it's fake subscribers because. When they go to do certain things, those numbers do not transition over. Now, let's be real. Nicki Minaj, she got over 20 million people on Instagram, allegedly. So if you got 20 million followers, I showed you this with Beyonce. It is no problem for you to sell nothing, sell out no tour. It's, everything you do, you're going to at least get a million and change off the rip. You got 20 million subscribers, right? But I'm just showing you a lot of that shit be fake. Might have a little million, two million, three million. Might even have five million. All that 20 million, that should be fake. Because they pay people. You don't think, like how we compete on a low level, they compete. Oh, shit, she see Cardi got 10 million. I need some more subs on my shit. And she go put some more subs on. Oh, the likes ain't looking right. We put some more likes on that. See that? That's why you'll see, too, the celebrities, they don't post a lot. But they make sure the post they make got a lot of likes on it. And they might leave that one post up for about a week because they add on to the shit because according to their internet following all of these rappers according to their internet following any project they put out should go through the roof right but you see it don't happen like that right like i showed you how could chris brown be black boy if he got all those followers Me meaning my point is this how can he not sell some shit if he got all the followers and that's why that's where the black ball is coming at because it's showing you no matter how many supporters they got, they can't get to the next level no more. So my point is, she claims that people are blackballing her, trying to ruin her career. But really, she's the one that's been accused of trying to do the same thing to other people. So really, she is snitching on herself because you believe other females doing it to you because you was doing it to other females. But you don't like when it happened to you. And now that all these other female rappers are blowing up, Ice Spice. Glorilla, Lotto, you get it? The rest of them, sweetie, they all just coming out the woodworks. Nicki Minaj has a lot of competition, so now she got to make excuses. But really, Nicki, you about to be 40. You older. It's time for you to evolve. You were supposed to have your own label putting out 
putting out rappers. You were supposed to have your own companies. You were supposed to have things invested in the city of New York. You were supposed to have your own office building. But you've been being a rapper, sitting in the house, allegedly turning up, worried about gossip, marrying pedophiles and chesters. You've been doing so much, you ain't been focusing on your business because you ain't got no real managers. You've been taking control of your own career and your arrogance and ignorance is what destroyed you. That's the facts of what I'm showing you. So when she went on the stage, just recent, the mic was fucking up and Lil Wayne was laughing. That's, that's how I got the full sign of the whole thing. This is recent of her being blackballed. Then we know after the show is when she was seen leaning and the car slumps. But she was pissed. Because she thought she was going to rock the crowd. But everybody that know about the rap game know the sound man will fuck your shit up. That's like if I don't like you and I pay, let's just say I don't like you and you doing the show, I can pay the sound man to fuck your sound up and fuck your show up. Tweak that treble. Add some distortion to it. Make it make her mic low. That's what they do. Because they said right before that, was it was crystal clear. But when she was trying to go into some of her new projects and her new stuff, Allegedly, that's when that happened. And when, and mind you, when she was talking shit to the DJ, Little Wayne was quiet. He ain't say shit. And I heard Little Wayne snap on the DJ. He ain't say nothing. He was, you see him hitting the blunt? What that mean? I'm just minding my business. Cause they knew what was going on. And Drake was there too. Cause they was there to support Lil Wayne, but they don't really fuck with her like that. Lil Wayne is just a smart businessman. He knew a lot of songs in the catalog got Nicki on it, and it's a good show. So why not let Nikki pull up? But as soon as she started trying to do too much, that goddamn mic cut off. That mic got distorted. So that was the sign of her being blackballed because they know that she's with him. You think you're gonna be with this dude and you're gonna shine at my concert? Lil Wayne said, I'm the big, I'm the big blood around here. <laughs> you ain't gonna, you know what I'm saying? You you shit it on Drake. You think you're gonna come up on here and do your thing? All right, whatever. So long story short, she brought it on herself. But what else? This is also recent news for those who just pulled up. I'm not just talking about Nikki out the woodworks. These, these is stuff coming out behind the scenes. Nikki's Nikki Minaj's husband, he is allegedly claiming that he's sick and he can't attend court because he has to go to court. He has to go to a mediation with the rape accuser, the woman that's accused him of rape in the past. He has to still deal with this situation and he don't want to see her he got two court days put off to the 24th but my point is why i'm bringing this up is he is the main reason why Nicki minaj career is going in a fucking toilet bowl because she made this decision and stuck by it and was proud of the shit you see she was bragging about her new husband and bragging about her new baby on the way and recently they've been trying to get the sex offender off his name. He's been trying to get off the registry. See that? January, a couple months ago. They still trying to fight getting this off the record, knowing he got to still go to court. And this is what's ruining her fucking career. This, nah, it ain't ruining. This is what has ruined it. Because a lot of people not feeling her because of this. I already showed y'all on a previous episode. It's her broadcasting this man and her support of her rapist brother who was raping an 11 year old and she still was going to see him in jail her brother was already convicted before she got with him so outright she showed us that she supports this behavior and she was unaware that this shit would ruin her career this woman thought she was so big that she could do anything and she gonna stay at the top but she had no clue about what a fallen angel is because what Hollywood done with you, you're going to fall. So this is my point. As we see, what? That she was bragging and trying to take up for him. She defended Petty in an Instagram post writing, he was only 15. And that woman that's claiming he raped her, man, she was only 16. And they was in a relationship. That's what she said. And then after she said that, she had the nerve to go marry the man. So when people was trying to tell her, yo, look, Nikki, he ain't no good. He ain't no good. He a rapist. Don't, he ain't no good. She basically said, fuck y'all, and married him anyway. So that was the nail of her own coffin. Ain't nobody make her do that. 
and that's why a lot of people are not fucking with her because it's not only the fact that he got those allegations it's not good for your brand so this is why she did it to herself and like i said earlier she could have kept it to herself but she was bragging now she has to live in shame and this is part of why her career is going where it's going at and she looks like a witch right there tell me i'm lying all right but she got with kenneth petty like i said for street cred for street credibility because cardi b was winning and cardi b was claiming blood and she had the streets she did cardi b had the streets of new york period and Nicki minaj thought she was the queen but her street cred was already fading away because she had already went commercial does Nicki minaj is Nicki minaj part of the bloods also don't forget the victim miss jennifer claimed that Nicki was using the bloods to scare her off this woman claims allegedly she had the move her family members were scared they was trying to put the pressure on her to say it wasn't true because they've been trying to get this stuff off of his jacket so allegedly they were threatening her and she said she would be threatened by bloods and it was this affiliation that has two strikes nikki you launch yourself up with an alleged sex offender and you align yourself up with a so-called blood but i'm going to say it again for everybody listening you cannot be a real blood and be a sex offender at the same time because real bloods do not like sex offenders it is actually against the rules and regulation it is called a violation and it's called off with his head all right just to clarify that let me say it again the new york bloods does not co-sign that type of behavior of sex offenders at all but Nicki minaj being unaware she co-signed a sex offender and was throwing up blood gang at the same time that is two violations and you're a civilian but for street cred and rap cred you posted this on your facebook you know the fucking vibes that's what she said you know the fucking vibes it's blood over here that's basically what she's saying you know the vibes queen get the money queens get the money because she was trying to get back queens back in pocket she was trying to get new york back under her belt she was trying to get the streets because she know cardi b was on her ass with them bloods remember the, the fight in the barn remember these fights remember all these different things going on it was smoke coming nikki way and she knew it was on her ass it was just a matter of time before they got it popping so nikki knew she had to get with the bloods see we gotta remember this <laughs> is see it was first it was this then she started claiming that she wasn't claiming it when cardi b was doing this nikki was doing this she was with this dude no street affiliation at all no blood affiliation at all and she just dropped the song claiming the gang shout out to the sleeves y'all know what time it is my point is this she's still trying to claim blood she's still trying to claim mac baller you feel me for clout because her clout is finished so i just wanted to show you she claimed she wasn't the gang but she already incriminated herself and there's other pictures of her throwing it up too all right so that's why i say bad decisions bad choices being ignorant meaning being stupid unaware dealing with this man right here was your demise this man was your demise and you see after all that cardi came out recently still claiming her claiming her colors and i ain't gonna get into cardi today but it is what it is all right but cardi been sold out too y'all remember years ago when Nicki Minaj did this same event at the uh Grammys remember now you see why Nicki Minaj dissing the Grammys and all the show shows because she knows they wash their hands of her when those people wash their hands of you that's when you're blackballed remember Chris Brown they just blackballed him recently from the American Music Award when you cannot sit down in the room of the elites and you're not on that stage that really means they don't fuck with you like that no more they gave the crown to Cardi B So she been sold out and that barbie shit been over that chun lee stuff been over all those cartoon commercial gimmicks are over with people are woke aware and the people who not they like better they like the new music now so it is what it is but see all that all those gimmicks are over with these were all gimmicks and marketing schemes like i told you earlier 
marketing tools to children and grown ass woman that's childish in the brain. All right, all her following is based on that. That's why she will never ever tell you no real shit. Like what? To all those barbs, don't follow me. Go to school, get an education, get you a degree, get you a good job. You know, be a good woman to your kids and your family. You ever heard her say that? Nope. I also showed y'all Silicon Valley is a joke. It was already on The Simpsons. <laughs> so the joke's on you, Jack. But it also goes with the narrative of the American economy crashing. So we can now say that is the first crash. So all we got to do is pay attention. Or other than that, shout out to the replay gang. I'm done. Thank y'all for pulling up. Yeah, y'all ain't know I was going to be here early today, but I had this all planned out. So uh, what y'all think? Did she do it to herself? Do you feel sorry for her? Is it just her time? It is what it is. But either way, her husband has to be to court on March 24th. And he's ducking going to court. So we'll see. I'm done. What up, Big Phil? That's right. Chris Brown also affiliated with blood. Entertainers that became blood after the fact. But it's really for protection. And a lot of them got with the gang to put a, put a wall up between them and the industry. Castor Troy. Yeah, she has to do a ritual. <laughs> what up, Wax? Yeah, she sold her soul for this. That's right. She did it to herself. Your associations mess, mess you up faster than anything else. That's right. What's up, Shayna? That's right. Yeah, she did it to herself because for real, all she had to do was really lay low. Like, if she would have laid low, if she would have never showed us her husband and kept him in a cut, we would have never known who he was for real. Not saying eventually people wouldn't have known, but if she would have kept him in a cut and it would have came out later, she could have said, well, damn, I didn't know he had all that shit on his background. I didn't know. But she was promoting him and broadcasting him. You got to remember, she if she got 20 million followers and she posts him, he has 20 million followers. But you're promoting a pedophile. Or maybe that was your ritual to promote a pedophile to the, to the young girls. Does he have access to some of your barbs too? Did your brother do you dirty when you was young? Because you still would support your brother. Did your brother touch on you? Or did he just come out of nowhere touching on kids? Huh? See? Those are things we got to look at. Because when her brother was convicted, she was still going to see him in jail. Like, she could not stop messing with that man. And I'm pretty sure most of us, we would cut... Even if it was our brother, we would cut his ass off if you found out what he was doing to an 11-year-old. Anyway, that's these weird people. She promoted getting educated to go to college, but never promoted real knowledge. Okay. She was just talking then. Did she give out any scholarships? Because the reality is, it might sound corny, the only way to make it in America is, is education. Education and who you know, period. Sometimes you need both. That's just the honest of God truth. The more education you have on paper, the more money you get. That's just the truth. What you do, that's on you, but that's just the truth. They know that. That's why they got to sell you dreams. What up, Flowers? That's right. This shit probably happened to her. You know why? Because she got altered personalities too, all right? For you to co-sign two rapists, you co-sign two rapists, and you market your music to little girls. In the world of sex trafficking, you market to little girls and you co-sign sex offenders. See? It's not hard. You market to little girls. Because grown women are smart and they're not going for that shit. What's good? What up, Rondell? Hold up. It makes you think what was really going on in Trinidad before she left there. That's what I'm saying, y'all. 
because we know people that have been violated sometimes a lot of them they don't have no compassion for other people some people that have been violated feel like okay whatever you down with me now see that it's certain people let me give you an example is it not some people in the family it might be one person they got touched by uncle so-and-so cousin so-and-so and they don't tell nobody and they watch uncle so-and-so touch damn the whole family but maybe that's what nikki was doing y'all ain't never noticed that and don't forget y'all for those who pulled up it was a 13 year old girl the 13 year old girl that her brother violated still had the heart to point his ass out in court and call him out on his shit. you see that he had to it was a 13 year old victim a real victim he will call me his puppet and i had no say what he did to me the girl said wearing glasses and with her hair pulled back in a ponytail in the courtroom a 13 year old face her, her you know say her, her, her victimizer the 13 year old face the man that did her dirty she faced the boogeyman but you got grown people walking around right now still did not face their so-called violator and they're supposed to be killers and gorillas and shooters but they didn't do nothing it was a 13 year old that stood up because when you're a victim you're a victim and a victim is never going to be cool with shit a victim is going to get payback the first chance they get and this 13 year old got payback his ass got life in jail and then after jail nikki went to still support him so she basically was saying f that little girl whatever he's still my brother see so some people have no compassion for nobody especially they've been violated and who's to say her husband ain't still violating people they might be out here running trains on chicks on fans who knows anyway hold up i believe something happened to her too i believe that because most of these people are broken they are broken and dysfunctional y'all know that the shade of dc two shaders in here she probably was rallying folks up in trinidad she don't even look like she knew them folks exactly yeah you know recently when she went back to carnival she she go back home and she be fronting now look i also <laughs> i ain't posted but when she went back to trinidad they was online joking on her trying to say she got big a lot of people saying Nicki minaj got big she out of shape now but you know when you get older you're gonna get grown woman size on you my point is they say she's she big and out of shape now so a lot of people are joking on her and the people this is my point the people that are joking on her are not paid trolls she just don't want to admit accept the fact that she's not that chick no more and a lot of people have turned against her for many different reasons she don't want to accept it it's the truth everybody eventually meets they fall especially if you wasn't moving right the things you put out will come back to get you so when remy told you that nikki was blackballing people behind the scenes you see it for yourself and you see now it's happening to her now she don't like it that's all that shit is she tried to use jamaican people for clout as well that's right those were her gimmicks y'all jamaican people because you gotta remember the, the, the island people period the west indian people period that's a whole marketing that's a whole bag right there that's money use the games that's another marketing tool use the rainbow community that's another marketing tool then i'm going to use the childish behavior to get the kids i got the kids that's another marketing lane now you see how a person can sell a million records you got all these different groups right you mix them all together like gumbo you get all those record sales and then you got a few that was listening to her for her lyrics but you know most of her following had nothing to do with it it's not just lyrics she can spit she says some stuff but she has cult followings because she has influenced many different people for many different reasons that's why a lot of people don't understand the way the industry was playing they wanted your heart and soul because once they got your heart and soul then they will get all your money and support the same thing they do with any product right now these rappers are nothing but a product they are a walking brand that's all they are 
The same way somebody always trying to sell you stuff on the internet, no matter what it is. Somebody always trying to sell you something. That's the same technique they use with these rappers. All right. Programming stuff in your brain. So you will forever be attached to the brand. The same way you go to the store, you see certain brands, you automatically pick it up. Your brain is trained to pick up that brand. If you see some Tide detergent and you see another name detergent, it could be just as good as Tide or better. But your brain is already trained to pick up the Tide bottle. See that? The same thing with the cereal. We might call it knockoff. It might taste better than the Kellogg's brand. But your brain is programmed to see Kellogg's and just pick it up. That is programming. That is the real marketing, marketing scam used to this day. To get you in tune with the product. The product is the rapper or the celebrity. Once you in tune mentally with the product, you will always buy the product. Same thing you do when you sell drugs. That's why most people get high off entertainment. It is a drug. And you are addicted to certain drugs. I mean certain celebrities. You're addicted to them. Or you, or you used to be. But a lot of people waking up now. What's up, M. Dot? Yeah, plastic leaking to her brain. Toxic chemicals in her bloodstream. Yeah, that's right. That's what happened when that stuff started leaking. <laughs> I was, I ain't have room. I was going to show you how when Lil' Kim first came out. Yes, Lil' Kim was overly sexualized, but I'll show you Lil' Kim was still marketing the grown-ups. All you got to do, go look at the Lil' Kim hardcore picture where she was posing with her legs open and she had on a leopard print. But you'll see she was more or less marketing the grown people. Nicki Minaj markets to kids and teenagers. That is her main market. Her market was never really grown women. It was always to children. Don't forget that. I'm going to say it again. That's why she was rapping in that dumbass kid voice. When she want to be serious, she raps in her real grown woman, hardcore voice. You know the difference. But it was all about the kids, y'all. Other than that, y'all, we done. Salute to the replay game. Shout out to all of y'all that been in tune. We've been on this thing for two hours. Yeah, I pulled up early. Y'all enjoy y'all day. Enjoy the week. Get to the money. I know everybody here. Get to the money. They get to the bag. Punching that clock. Cashing that check. That's right. Stay in tune out here. It's still an inflation. It's still a lot of things going on. I'm going to touch on some more tomorrow because I ain't have enough space for today. Right? I'm going to give you some more proof on these children being taken. Right now. And going to basically turning up missing. I'm going to show y'all proof. So other than that. Y'all stay right. Y'all stay blessed up. Y'all stay good. Y'all stay, yo, stay in the loop. I appreciate all of y'all. Y'all know I love my people. And we out. One.